welcome to Happy Chick. Today, I don't have anything ready to show you for brewing wise, so I thought I would bring you a little video on how to use a hydrometer. My mother-in-law, Mary, hi Mary, asked me how to use one. She's got it, but she couldn't, can't figure out how to use it. The instruction booklet kind of is kind of is confusing to her. And I agree, it is kind of confusing. I mean, it takes into consideration temperature, minus this and plus this, and yada, 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 and yada, yada, yada. And I don't blame her for not understanding it because I didn't understand it at first too. So I'm gonna show you kind of a simple way of doing it. Now we're not gonna to be totally accurate, but that's okay. We're home brewers. We don't need to be specific to the 100th of percentile of alcohol content. We're not trying to sell this stuff. We're just trying to brew it and drink it. So if we get close, that's all we need. Also, eh, you know, alcohol content is nice to know, but it, that's not the end all and be all. What I use this for really is to let me know if if my brew's done or not. Is it stuck? Does it, I mean, you know, does it need more time? Things like that. This is such a handy tool to have for that instance, not just telling me what's the alcohol content. So let me show you what this looks like. They're not expensive. I think I got mine for around $20, and that was like maybe seven, eight years ago, so they might be even cheaper, I don't know. Um, mine's a wonky one because it leans. If you've ever seen my videos, it leans. And it's because it was made funky, but I still use it. It gets me close to, you know, my numbers. Um, it has a thermometer that they do kind of vary a little bit, but most of them will have a thermometer. So that way, you know, if your must is cool enough to pitch your yeast, um, they have, uh, sometimes they'll have three, sometimes they'll have just two different types of charts. Now this is where it gets confusing because they have three different charts or graphs or whatever you want to call it. Mine has three. Uh, mine has the specific gravity, which is what I use um, for calculating my uh, alcohol uh, by volume, ABV. They have um, potential alcohol, which unless you're extremely precise, it is off base. So I don't even use that. And then it has a bricks calculation, which I don't know how to use, so I can't even tell you how to use it. So I just ignore those two graphs and use just the specific gravity graph. Um, it's really, really tiny. Otherwise, I'd show you on the actual hydrometer. So I actually, I did a drawing. Now I'm no Michelangelo, so don't judge, okay? <laughs> so this is the tip of can you see it? All right, this is the tip of the hydrometer. This part up here. This is where it floats in the graduated cylinder um, and the level will show, you know, the liquid level will show. So, does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> now, most of these um, will start at the 0 0.990 uh, level. It'll have some, at least mine has, um, every two degrees or points or whatever you want to call them uh, to get to 1.000. A lot of times people will not say the point, they'll just say uh, 1020, 1040, 1080, and it's really 1.080 or, you know, whichever your numbers are. Um, and then you go, higher and higher and higher in numbers. The higher the number, the higher the density of your liquid, meaning it has more sugars in it. Sugar water is more dense than just regular water. Water is neutral and it's at the 1.000 level. So if you calculate some water, put it in a, a, in a um, calibrated tube of some sort, or if you have a 
picture or something that's deep enough to float that hydrometer in, it will hover around the 1.000 if it's just pure water. If you've got any sugar or salt or anything that will change the density of the water, then your hydrometer will float and it will indicate uh, where it's leveling at. Now, when you look at it, it will look curved and that is just because of the way that liquid, um, it's the meniscus and it's the liquid that kind of forms around the container and the uh, hydrometer. So you wanna read at the very bottom of the, hibis of the hibiscus, <laughs> of the meniscus. <laughs> it's early, forgive me. <laughs> All right, so we've got that chart, okay? Do we understand how this chart works? So how do I figure ABV? Well, it's a small calculation. Sorry, there is a little bit of math involved. And it's original gravity minus final gravity times 131.25. And that will give you ABV, alcohol by volume. Approximate. Once again, we're just home brewers, so, you know, you could be off by a couple points, but it's neither here nor there. So how do we use this in the real world? Alrighty, so I have my equation here. So we made a brew and say it came to 1.060 is our original gravity. This is what we measured before any yeast started producing alcohol, okay? So it's fairly dense. So after a month or so, we test it again, and lo and behold, it's down to 1.000, okay? So we're pretty sure it's done. We like it dry. So we're gonna go ahead and bottle it and figure out our ABV. So we subtract 1.000 from the 1.060, and that gives us 0.06, okay? So we multiply that by 131.25, and that gives us 7.875, alcohol by volume. That's pretty good, huh, for like a beer or something like that. Kind of low for a wine, though. Ours are usually closer to like 12 or so, but at least the math will show you how it's done. Now, if you really go, Lee, I don't want to do no math. What do you do? Well, the easiest thing is to Google an ABV calculator and just plug in your original gravity, your final gravity, and hit a button, and it'll tell you what your ABV is. Easy peasy. There's loads of them out there, and you might be off by a point or two, you know, hundredth of a point, but at least to give you an idea. So this is the easiest breakdown of calculating ABV that I can think of. Now, if you start adding sugar and rebrew and stuff like that, then that goes into a little bit more math. I'm not gonna go into that right now. This is just a simple start, finish, is my brew done kind of testing you can see you know after a month if it's changed then it brewed some more if it stayed the same then you know your brew is done um, if I was brewing some wine and it was at 7.87 and I know my yeast will go surely up to 15% then I probably have a stuck brew I never would know without using a hydrometer. I would think it'd be done and go, man, is this sweet or man, is this not right or, you know, whatever. It don't taste very strong. You know, these come in handy and I highly, highly, highly suggest getting one if you're going to consider doing some home brewing. It will save the bacon. Well, 
Not bacon, but it'll save the wine, maybe. <laughs> anyway, I hope this clarified um, your questions about the hydrometer. If you have any other questions, put them down in the comments below, and I'll get them and answer them for you as best I can. Now remember, I'm not a professional either, so, you know, <laughs> but I'll do the best I can. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. Have a great day. Bye!